Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another video in the Decade Reading series. For those of you who might not be familiar with this, uh, one of my reading plans for 2020 is um, to read books from the last 10 years. So books published between 2010 and 2019. And what I do for each uh, publication year, I pick two books, a fiction and a non-fiction work, that made some impact in that publishing year, won a prize or got uh, was best-selling, that I didn't read. Um, and then I read those two books and I talk about them. And the second installment now, this video, is the year 2011. Oh, and before I begin with the two books of 2011, if you're interested um, uh, of... <laughs> like make a whole sentence if you're interested in the two books of the year 2010 I will leave a link to that video down below. First my fiction pick uh, that was a debut novel The Tiger's Wife uh, by Thea Obrecht. Uh, Thea Obrecht was born in 1985 in the former Yugoslavia and she immigrated to the United States when she was 12 year old so the book is not a translated work because I only pick books originally um, written in English just to, to, to clarify that <laughs> and as you can see today I having I'm having problems of making whole sentences so breathe in breathe out and try to make a whole sentence so anyway this was my fiction pick um, it made quite a splash it won a couple of prizes um, and I yeah I've, I wanted to read it but then I forgot about it you know how it goes um, it's uh, the book is set in an unnamed uh, country uh, after a war, but we can gather from the, uh, the names of the cities that's in the Balkans. And the main character is Natalia, a young doctor working in an orphanage. The book opens when Natalia's grandfather suddenly and somewhat mysteriously died uh, while he was on his way to visit her. And then the book is a mixture of um, Natalia's own life, uh, her, her work as a doctor, uh, but I would say the bigger portion of the, the narrative is about her grandfather. Um, uh, stories he told her, uh, for instance, about the tiger's wife, uh, a, a, young, a tale about a young woman who loves the tiger so much that she becomes a tiger herself um, and his wife. Uh, so it's, it's folk tales, but also stories about the uh, past of her grandfather while Natalia is trying to come to grips, first of all, with the death, but also finding out what exactly happened. Um, I read this book originally as a buddy read with Amelia, um, who doesn't have a booktube channel but who comments regularly and I leave a link to her Goodreads page uh, uh, because she's really uh, a lovely person and a lovely reader. Um, Amelia bailed on the buddy read after the first hundred pages because the book wasn't for her and I have to say unfortunately I finished it because I wanted to read it for this project but it wasn't for me either. Um, I have, you know, the mystical and the, the magical realism thing is not really my thing anyway, but for me it was more that I enjoyed some of the stories that she told, uh, whether the more fairy tale like stories or the stories about her grandfather or about her work, but the book as a whole for some reason never came together for me. Um, and I also thought that it was, um, yeah, I don't know, for want of a better word, overwritten in the sense that it it was too um, yeah, too much. Um, if you have a dialogue, for instance, again, making a whole sentence is difficult. If she has a dialogue, for instance, and there, uh, just as an example, that is hypothetical, and you talk about um, a, a cup of tea that you want to get, and then she repeats that over and over where for two pages, whereas I thought, well, after a paragraph, 
I know what you're talking about. Let's leave it at that. So it's not my style of writing at all. I know that many people love this book. Um, so if you think this sort of mystical tale, uh, folk tale combination uh, would appeal to you, you should certainly try it out. But it was unfortunately absolutely not for me. And then on to my non-fiction pick, which um, is a memoir, Joyce Carol Oates' memoir, A Widow's Story. Um, Joyce Carol Oates, you know, doesn't need any introduction, one of the most prolific contemporary American writers. Um, I have um, a mixed relationship with Carol Oates's work. Some things, some books of her, I, I love. I, I think they are they are brilliant. Others not so much, but that's maybe not a surprise, you know, when you have an author who puts out one or two books every year. And I've read, I would say, not even half. Um, the widow story, as I said, is a memoir. It's a grief memoir. Um, in 2008, jo uh, Joyce Carol Oates' husband, uh, Raymond Smith, uh, to whom she was married for many decades, um, unexpectedly died very suddenly um, after he caught the flu uh, uh, and had an, an, an infection in the hospital and died within a week. Um, the, the memoir then tells us mostly the time afterwards, how Joyce Carol Oates tries uh, to come to terms with this sudden loss. Um, and um, as I said on Goodreads, if you had a look for, by, by any chance, um, it, it's a, it, for me it was a, a difficult to read because as a grief memoir, it's very raw, emotional, um, and Joyce Carol Oates doesn't shy away uh, from, um, uh, yeah, uh, you know, from really conveying this raw emotion, whether it uh, makes her look uh, nice or not. So it's not a grief memoir in the sense that somebody really reflects on what happened, but it's a memoir showing the emotions of that time. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have lost somebody of, or if you have experienced uh, something uh, similar, uh, you know that it, it feels as if this, what happened to you is like a singular event which it isn't, of course. Many people experience that. So that as aspect of the memoir, I thought, was quite interesting um, because, uh, like I said, she, Joyce Carol Oates didn't reflect on that fact. Uh, looking at her back then and saying, well, you thought it was something very special and uh, singular, but it isn't. No, it's really the raw uh, emotion of that moment. But that's why I started how difficult it was to rate, because you also see Joyce Carol Oates, um, yeah, some aspects of her that I really thought, oh boy, oh boy, I wish <laughs> I hadn't read that. She is, a, for instance, a very traditional wife, the 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 snippets you get um, when she talks about her idea of marriage and f male female is for me cringeworthy because it's so traditional, so typical male female. And I have to say, in some of her fiction work, that bothered me. But then it's fiction, you know, it's diff. But the, the, for instance, the fact that. It really comes through that a woman is more or less nothing without a partner. So th these aspects really, yeah, if, you know, when you read a memoir and then you sometimes wish that you did hadn't known what you know now about the person. But still, for people interested in memoirs and people in particular inter interested in grief memoirs, that certainly uh, A Widow's Story is certainly a book uh, that I could recommend. 
And in addition um, to me reading two books from a certain year that I didn't read and talk about them, I always also in the video present a book of that year that I really loved. Uh, whether I read it in that publishing year or not doesn't really matter. So for 2011, I chose Amy Waldman's debut novel, The Submission. The Submission is set 10 years after a devastating terrorist attack. It's clearly meant to reflect 9-11, even though that term is not mentioned and some of the um, historical facts are changed. There's a different mayor, there's a different president. So she, the, the Amy Waldman tried to make it clear that this is a work of fiction and it doesn't really matter whether it's 9-11 or anything else. But for the reader, it's sort of clear that it's meant to be um, uh, set 10 years after 9-11. Uh, so a terrorist attack uh, uh, by Muslim terrorists. Um, the book then um, is about a memorial that is uh, to be built. And one of the main characters, Claire, that's how the book opens. She lost her husband in that attack and she is one of the vo more, most vocal uh, organizers of this committee uh, to choose an architect to make a memorial. Um, the submissions hence the title, are uh, without name or anything. So you just get the proposal of the work. And there is one chosen, a sort of a garden idea by an architect uh, called Mo, who was born and raised in the United States and turns out to be a really famous architect. But there is one slight little problem because Mo is Mohammed Khan and he is Muslim. So the book then explores um, the, the problem that might arise if you had an attack like 9-11, um, the perpetrators were Muslim, and then you want uh, to build a, a, a memorial site, and the architect of that site is Muslim as well. That's the premise of the book, and that's the story that then unfolds. We get the perspective of Claire, we get the perspective of Mo but also from some young uh, Muslim uh, uh, activists. So various perspectives dealing with that fact. What, what do you do? Um, I uh, thought it was really one of the, the best uh, books that I read uh, trying to tackle 9-11 um, uh, as an event and especially the aftermath of such an event. Um, I know that the more philosophical, um, you know, passages in the book, they, they are more subtle and quiet. There's not that much pacing sometimes. That's not something that everybody loved. I know that. But I, I really thought uh, it was a fabulous book and certainly for a debut novel. So... The submission is my pick uh, as one of my favorite books for 2011. And I end the video like I did uh, the 2010 video with uh, telling you my two picks for the next year. Just for people who want to read along or are interested what is upcoming. Um, and uh, my pick for fiction for 2012 is A.M. Holmes' May We Be Forgiven. Um, the tale of two brothers, one of which is murderous. That's all I know, basically. I picked this book because I enjoyed um, A.M. Holmes' um, uh, uh, memoir, The Mistress's Daughter, and I read This Book Might Save Your Life, which I also liked. Uh, she's an American author, and I always, uh, I was always planning on reading more of her work, but you know how it goes, and then you don't. So when I saw that this book of hers uh, was published in 2012, it was really basically a no-brainer for me uh, that this would be my 2012 pick. Uh, and for the non-fiction book of 2012, uh, I picked uh, Rebecca Stott's book, Darwin's Ghosts. 
Uh, Rebecca Stott is a um, um, Cambridge-educated uh, professor of literature, uh, and in her in this book she explores um, the Darwin's predecessors, so to speak, um, the 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 evolutionary theory, uh, how it developed, and the, the origins of it. Ha! Made a joke. Origins of species. The origin. Uh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Um, so she explores the Darwin's predecessor, so to speak, before he came up with his origin of species um, in the mid-19th century. Um, I will leave a link to her Darwin lecture uh, down below. You can find that on YouTube if you are interested. And if you're following me, you know that I love to read about science, uh, especially uh, uh, evolutionary theory is one of the things I'm really interested in. And I read uh, Darwin's Origin of Species uh, last year for the first time in its original English and in its entirety. So when I saw this book that was very well uh, reviewed and was, uh, I don't know, best-selling, but it, it made an impact in 2012, I thought this is the book that I want to read for 2012. Um, as for planning, because some of you asked me then um, last time in the comments, when are you planning on, on making the video, the next one? Um, it's now mid-March and I would say I will probably uh, read the 2012 end of March, beginning of April. So the next video about the 2012 reads will be after Easter, sometime after Easter, if you want to read along. Anyway, so this was uh, reading the decade number two, uh, 2011. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, you know that I'm looking forward to your comments and I'll see you all soon in the next one.